Hi, I'm Howard, and welcome to my series on 3D LUT Creator. Today we're going to be jumping into the Curves tab, but we're not going to be starting so much with Curves because as a continuation of last week's uh, color grading video, I wanted to jump into a hidden feature that is within the Curves tab, which is color grading using the rings. And there's two methods. There's the Shadows, Midtones, and Highlights method, and probably more unique to most people that might be watching this that come from still photography, the three-way method of color grading using offset, gamma, and gain. Now, if you're new to this series and would like to review some of our older videos, or if you just want to refresh some of the stuff that we've covered before, I'm going to leave a link to the entire 3D LUT Creator playlist above. And if you find content like this useful, I'd really appreciate it if you click the subscribe link below and give the video a thumbs up. It really helps and I appreciate it. Let's jump right into the video. In today's video, we're going to start looking at the Curves tab. So let's go there. Now why do I say start to look at it? It looks pretty simple and not really too dissimilar from Photoshop Curves, doesn't it? In fact, of all the tabs we've gone over so far, this is really the only one whose interface doesn't look totally bizarre and unfamiliar. But don't let that fool you. There is a lot of stuff going on this in this tab, and a lot of stuff that's quite powerful, but a good deal of it is hidden away. As a matter of fact, in today's video, I'm going to talk about two of the relatively hidden items. Let's have a look today at the shadows, midtones, and highlight method of color grading and more uniquely to 3D LUT Creator, the three-way method of color grading. To show how they work, I'm going to bring a black to white gradient that I made in Photoshop into 3D LUT Creator. So let's start with the shadows, midtones, and highlights method because that's going to be most familiar to everyone. So first we have to find the shadows, midtone, and highlight controls and they are hidden here, right here. You click here, and there's a drop-down. There's a lot of stuff in here. We're going to go to SMH, Shadows, Midtones, and Highlights. Seemingly nothing happens. But if we click on Rings, we are presented with three rings, one for the shadows, one for the midtones, and one for the highlights with this bar underneath. Now, where have we seen this before? These are essentially the same color grading rings that we have available to us in Lightroom. In fact, I've opened the rings up in the Lightroom Develop panel so we can take a look and compare them. So, we've got shadows, midtones, and highlights. We've got Shadows, Midtones, and Highlights. We've got the color wheel hues running around the outside of the rings. And we've got the colors running around the outside of the rings. We double click the point to reset it in Lightroom. And I'm going to demonstrate this when we have the gradient open. But to reset these points, we double-click them as well. In Lightroom, we have these colors. And the further out in the wheel towards the edge we get, the more saturated the colors are. Likewise, in these rings, the more we pull this point out towards the edge of the wheel, the more saturated the colors get, just as in Lightroom. Now, in Lightroom, in order to change the brightness of the particular uh, tones that we're adjusting here, the shadows, we have this slider to increase or decrease the brightness. We do it a little differently over here, but we can still do it. The way we do it here is we hold down the shift key and drag brighter up, darker down, 
And it's not surprising because we've done the same thing with the shift and drag and multiple other tabs. I'll reset that with our usual reset indicator. We'll bring Lightroom back and double click here to reset. Now, in Lightroom, we sort of define where the shadows, highlights, and midtones are by this balance slider. We have a similar sort of slider, but a little different uh, here in 3D LUT Creator, which I'm going to demonstrate to you as well. And here we have the shadow end, the highlight end, and the midtones. And you'll see we're going to be able to move all these points around for a little better control uh, over what is defined as shadows, midtones, and highlights. So I'm going to return this, and we're going to have a look at how this all works with our gradient. Okay. So here we have a gradient that goes from black to white. Let's see what our rings do. So let's start with the shadows. And I'm going to tint the shadows a shade of green. Now, as you'll see, as I move this point out towards the edge of the wheel, the green becomes more and more saturated. So here we have our shadows turning green tint. And you can see how far that progresses towards the midtones. And if you didn't have a gradient to look at, you sort of have a gradient down here on this bar, which is really excellent. So you can see the deeper green in the shadows that fade out towards the midtones, towards the midpoint. Now, Let's say you want to protect your shadows, the deepest shadows, and not have the deep blacks turn a green color. We have a slider here. You can grab this shadow point and move it towards the right. And look what happens on the gradient as I do so. I'm protecting more and more of the shadows. And I can control that very well in terms of where I want that green tint to begin in the shadows. Now the green tint also extends towards sort of ends in the midpoint, midtones, but let's say I want to control how much of the midtones are tinted green. Well, I just grab the midtone slider and I can shift that one way or the other. So this is telling 3D LUT Creator what to consider midtones. And here I have it set that I should consider midtones way out into almost the brightest area, as you can see here. So you can see we have very nice control over where that tint is going to go. I'm going to reset that. And we can do the same thing as you'll see with the midtones. Now you can see here how far this green tone extends towards the shadows and the highlights. You can see the same thing here. And again, now our extreme shadows are spared. Our extreme highlights are spared. Let's say you want to spare more of the highlights. Well, you just pull the highlight slider in. And you can see that now this area is untinted. Likewise, we can change where our midtones are, are defined. And if we want to remove some of this, we can define what our shadows are. So we have very fine control over what portions of our image are going to be tinted and graded. Likewise, highlights, same deal. You can see the green tint here. You can see the green tint here. You want to protect some of these absolute whites so that, for example, you, they don't get muddyish looking. We can take the highlight slider, shift it down, and we can protect as much of the highlights as we want. So really very nice control with these rings. And again, I should probably just demonstrate one more time that if we hold down our shift key and drag up, we can brighten the shadows or darken the shadows. 
and reset. So, the shadows, midtones, and highlight method of color grading looks good. Why do we need any other method? The answer is that there's other ways that act a bit differently and also can give you more natural results. I mean, if you think about it, it is a bit unnatural to have one color tint in the shadows, a second in the midtones, and potentially even a third in the highlights. Natural light just really doesn't work that way. Nonetheless, uh, the technique of tinting your highlights with a warm color and your shadows with a cool one can look really nice. And that's something that is really pretty easily accomplished with these shadows, midtones, and highlight rings. But there is another way, the so-called three-way method of toning. Let's have a look. To get to the three-way method, we come to our drop-down menu here that gave us the shadows, midtones, and highlights. Click on it and we see three ways. Now, if you were just opening the three-way when you first came to the Curves tab, you might find yourself with this interface. So just a reminder that you have to click on the Rings tab. So let's have a look at the three-way method of color grading. This method comes straight from the video world, and it's quite different from shadows, midtones, and highlights. Now, even though it comes from the video world, it can be used extremely effectively in still photography. As you can see, we have offset, gamma, and gain. Now, some people may say that it's like shadows, midtones, and highlights, but it really isn't. And I'm going to show you how it's different. Let's start with offset. Consider offset as the color tint you're going to use to set the entire mood of your image. The tint that you apply affects the whole image, just like light would in the real world. So you know how in some movies everything appears blue or green to make it look spooky or evil looking? That's offset. And you can see that if we apply a green tint to the gradient, which I'm going to do here, that it really affects the entire, the entire gradient from black to white. And you can see that here down in our bar that the green stretches all the way from black to white. Now we do have these shadows and highlight sliders like we did in the other bar for shadows, midtones, and highlights. But because offset is meant to really affect the whole image, you can see that the effect of moving these endpoints are not quite as dramatic as in the other ring. So if I move this in to protect the extreme highlights from getting tinted, you can see that we are starting to spare some of these highlights, but even then there's the slightest of tint there. So it really sort of affects how much of the tint gets into the highlights. And likewise, if you want to try to spare your shadows, uh, there you get a little more of a sparing effect. And you can see how you can make that adjustment. Now, very similar to the shadow midtone and highlight wheels, we can also click, hold down shift, click and drag, to make everything that the offset effects brighter and darker. But you can see now, because it's offset, we're really affecting the whole image, the whole gradient, not just the shadows portion. So offset is very different than shadows. It's meant to affect really the entire image to give it mood. Let me reset that. Now let's look at gamma. So gamma has a pretty broad effect on the image as well, but it tends to leave the extreme highlights and the extreme shadows alone and tends to affect mostly the midtones into the shadows. But it does it in a much wider way than the midtone wheel does when we're using the shadow midtone highlight method of color grading. Let's take a look at that on the gradient. So if I grab the gamma point, and I apply green to that, you can see that the very extreme highlights are left more or less untoned. 
and the extreme shadows are left more or left on more or less untoned but the effect extends really through very widely through the midtones and into the into the shadows and highlights but not the extreme points so we have to recognize that whatever we color grade into the gamma setting is going to be layered onto the tint that we gave the whole image using offset. So let's take a look at that. Let's say I was to give the offset one of those evil blue colors and then take gamma and give that a green tint. Well, you can see what's happening is that the blue here is emerging into the highlights and a bit into the shadows because it's tinting the entire gradient while the green is layered on into more than just the midtones, but midtones very widely. And of course, that green is layered on the blue as well here in the midtones. So it takes on a bit of a different color. I'm going to turn off the offset and you can see what color that would turn into if it wasn't layered on top of the offset. Now, I've reset the grid, but I should also mention with gamma that we also have some control over the range that it extends using these controls. So here I'm going to adjust how far into the shadows it goes. And you can see we have a nice smooth adjustment for that. And likewise, we could control how far into the highlights it goes. So again, we have really very nice control. I'm going to reset that. So finally, we have gain. Gain can also affect a pretty wide portion of the image, but it has more of its effect moving into the highlights. Let's look at that on the gradient. So I'm going to take the gain. We can put a green tint on it. And you can see that it's extending mostly from the midtones into the highlights and sparing the shadows. Once again, we could control how far into the highlights it goes. And we could control, although it doesn't affect these shadows at all, if we move this up, we can control how far into these deeper midtones that tint gets. So now I'm going to reset our grid here. And let's apply a color grading using all three. So I'm going to give the offset one of our greenish blue colors. We'll give the gamma here. We'll give the gain here. And you can see that we have coming out into the highlights this bluish green offset color that's affecting the whole image. And in the midtones, we have, you know, the layered effect. And in the gain, we have our purplish color combining with the blue of the offset. And it's really given a very nice, smooth color grading. And of course, you know, as I had demonstrated before, we can affect how deeply into the shadows, midtones, or highlight that extends. So we've got a nice, really very natural looking, smooth color grade from highlights to shadows. Now, interestingly, as I mentioned, this is very different than shadow, midtones, and highlight gradings. And just to demonstrate that, if I actually go back to this drop down and change this to shadows, midtones, and highlights instead of offset, gamma, and gain, these particular points will stay right where they are. It's just the wheels that will change. And when I do that, you'll see, had I put these points here in the shadow, midtones, and highlight wheels, things would look very different. So let's go ahead and do that. We have our nice smooth sort of purplish to bluish gradient here. If I'm going to go down to the drop down, and if I 
switch this to shadows, midtones, and highlights. The points stay the same, but you can see the color grading is extremely different and disparate. Well, we've covered a lot, and I do hope that it was useful to you. What I didn't get a chance to do because the video was getting a little lengthy was to use the rings on an actual photograph, and perhaps we'll do that next time around. Again, I know I've asked before, but if this video was helpful to you and you enjoy content like this, I'd really appreciate your clicking on the subscribe button and giving the video a thumbs up. We'll see you next time.